They do a lot to teach us how to use the tools and gifts we got.
thank you. On behalf of the student, uh, student Union and Student Activities, it's my pleasure to welcome everyone today to our 20th Annual uh, Student Leadership uh, Program. And it's a special day, 20th, uh, 20th time, so let's give it a little round of applause for our, our, our anniversary. My name is Mark Constantine, and I serve as the Director of Student Activities and the Student, student Union. I'm happy to MC to start the show off today uh, for everybody. I wanted to let everybody know, um, especially our families and our faculty and staff here, I wanted to say thank you for everything that you do for our students. The family members that are here, we realize that our students don't come here and we teach them everything. The values and the ethics you spend with the students before they get here is invaluable uh, to, this, to the leadership that we receive. And most of that is it's because of you. And the faculty and staff members that are with us, we know that you spend a lot of time with these student organizations and our leaders. The type of things you do day in and day out with them are certainly appreciated by the entire university, but especially us in student activities because we prosper because of the greatness of our student leaders. I also wanted to say a little word just quickly to our student leaders. We want to thank you so much for the broad, broadness and the cultural attraction that you bring to the university on a day in and day out basis. This university wouldn't be anything without our student leaders. Our world in student activities is dependent on a vibrant campus where our student leaders step up, they take leadership positions, and they lead their group to make it better and to add things on a regular basis for our community. For those students that are graduating, we say thank you for your years with us. And I always want to pass on that we hope that what you've learned here, you bring to your communities. We want to make sure there's matter of pride in those churches or synagogues, places that you go to afterwards, your communities that you're involved with, in a civic organizations. It's important for you to give those things back. And we hope that some of that has started because of here because of your leadership experiences. For those students that are returning, we want you back. We want to make sure you do more than you've done this past year and you continue, continue to contribute uh, to our university culture. We know that this is an important piece for you all as well. The things that you do as student leaders help build resumes, help you get more attributes for yourself on what you're going to do in, in your jobs and your careers in the future. So we, we hope and we uh, that you come back and you work with us on a regular basis um, so that we can have more of your expertise and we all can look and shine more as Minnesota State University of Mankato. I'm also tasked today with a little bit of direction, so this is important for everybody to listen to. I'm sort of the traffic cop giving you some directions along, along the way here. Our program, what we'll do during the program is we'll be nominate all the, the different categories will have nominees. When, when we're on a certain category, we want all the nominees to stand up where you are if you're able. And then after the award recipient is, is uh, named, that award recipient will come up to my, my hand, my side of the stage, your right hand side, and stand on the X here up on the, up on the stage. Um, at that point in time, a little piece will be read about the, nom the, the person that's winning the award. And, uh, You'll receive then a small token of our appreciation while you're here, while that's being read by some of the other presenters along, along the way. We also want to um, make sure, oh, I forgot one thing. Um, as, you're, as you're up here on this part, when you depart, please come down to this set of the stairs so we can keep track of moving along the way too. That'd be, be great. At the end of our ceremony, we'll be taking pictures of all the, uh, all the nominees and all the winners out in the, the lobby, Lenny Copo, where's Lenny, is he here? Lenny's over there waving. Lenny will be taking uh, pictures of all of, our, uh, all of our folks, but you also stay around with families and, and uh, some of the nominees and students that are here. They'll take individual pictures, whatever you'd like, um, to be able to have some memories for those type of things as, as well. Make sure I didn't miss anything so Michelle doesn't yell at me afterwards. Um, now I would like to uh, call to the stage Michelle Harvey, Johnny Faraday, who will be presenting the next awards. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Drew Dudley, author of 
This is day one, a practical guide to leadership that matters, said, leadership recognized is leadership created. Let me say that again. Leadership recognized is leadership created. He suggests that we take some time to look around us at the everyday moments of leadership that are happening all around, not think about all the leadership on a pedestal that we think when we think big leadership. That's what we've been doing for 20 years with this event. It's a time to pause and think about all the moments of leadership on our campus. At this time, all of our nominees, as you're able, please stand or give a wave to your hand and be recognized. There's a lot of you in the room.
thank you for the extraordinary work that you do with our RSOs. The Outstanding Recognized Student Organization Advisor Award is given to an advisor of an RSO who has gone above and beyond in working with members of their organization. The nominees are Darty Mason, Circle with Circle K International, Emma Mori with Matt Lankins, Carrie Swine with American Sign Language Club. This year's Outstanding Recognized Students Organization Advisor is Carrie Swine, RSO Advisor for American Sign Language Club. Mary Swine is actually not here, she's in a soccer game, so I'm going to be reading um, her nomination letter about her. Mary Swine is a friend to everyone she meets. Her nominator wrote, Restarting the ASL club has its challenges, but Carrie has been our rock through all of it. She has provided solid advice and the resources we need to have the foundation and the ground beneath our feet. At our meetings, Carrie is a joy to have. Our members love her there and seem to be absorbed in everything she says. I've learned so much from Carrie, and I hope I never stop learning. While teaching, Carrie regularly updates members on ASL happenings and recruits new members. She's available to the officers for phone calls, meetings, and anything they need. She provides resources and a safe space to work through problems. Congratulations, Carrie, and thank you for being a mentor, an advisor, an idol, and a friend. Now, allow me to introduce <laughs> Circle 
Article 8 is that ours to look in the two tenets of service to the community, leadership development, and fellowship. It is a college level of Humanities International. The club started out this year with 10 members and two excellent recruitment. It has more than doubled to 24 members. They meet weekly for the school year. Several K members have completed more than 1,000 hours of service since April 2022. A couple of local projects include flexing bags for connection centers. Each bag contains hand warmers, lip balm, cleaners, toothbrush, toothpaste, socks, and a personal This year, the club delivered over 100 bags. They also, they also include um, adopted highway, both the fall and the spring. 20 individual volunteers work their assignments to rescue the trash and use prepared for very natural habitats for animals and plants. The same circle K is come for the service, stay for the people. To increase membership, the club maintains its commitment to fellowship and train members, no one another. Officers have created members, appreciate bags, honor their dedication, and commitment to service. So today, we thank you, Circle K, for your dedication to service. <laughs> I now invite Crystal Watts, Interim Assistant Director for Community Engagement, to the stage. presented to a student who is involved in community service at Minnesota State University, Mankato. The student demonstrates civic responsibility through service and inspires hope in those they serve and in others around them. Along with spending time serving others, this student shows respect and compassion for members of the Minnesota State University, Mankato campus community. The nominees are Anna Simons and Noman Senadier. All of her applause is written in red, so I'm glad you can see my script. <laughs> and the recipient is on the signs. Students to serve. 
the Richard E. Murray Volunteerism Endowment was created to support the same mission that the Davy family supports. These scholarships combine to form the Community Engagement Scholarship section of today's program. Our Davy Family Service Scholarship recipient this year is Ami Kashbia Ahmed. to leave, leave a lasting and meaningful impact on the community she calls home by actively participating in various initiatives, collaborating with organizations, and contributing to the well-being of both the environment and the community. In addition to her own volunteering with Echo Food Shelf and Adopt a Highway, she has been involved in many other projects through the International Student Association and her sorority, Alpha Sigma Alpha. For example, with the International Student Association, Kashbia established and executed campaigns to raise awareness about eco-friendly practices and promote sustainable habits and conscious living on campus. Within Alpha Sigma Alpha, Kashbia has led a fundraising campaign to craft and sell eco-friendly candles and car diffusers with funds going to Be The Light, an organization that supports cancer survivors. Congratulations, Kashbia. Scholarship recipient today is Lucy Klatt. <laughs> Lucy was unfortunately not able to be here with us today, uh, but I'm going to read her, um, her part of the script. Lucy has served as president of STORM, a club at Bethany Lutheran College that strives to serve the greater, Ma greater Mankato area and beyond. Under Lucy's leadership, a, part a partnership has formed with Feeding Our Community's Partners, with student vol students volunteering their time and fundraising efforts. Lucy views her role as president as not only developing service opportunities for others, but also to inspire others to serve with a servant's heart. Lucy is pursuing a graduate degree in communication sciences and disorders with the goal of becoming a licensed speech language pathologist. Congratulations, Lucy. Thank you both for your service to our community and congratulations for making a positive impact on the world. And now I would like to introduce Taylor Burkle, uh, social media and marketing coordinator for the Maverick Involvement Team, along with Bill Torval, assistant director of campus programs. consistently works hard behind the scenes and rarely receives recognition that's deserved. Nominees have made an impact with a positive attitude and a willingness to help in whatever capacity necessary. The nominees are Emily Kranz, Alvin Mucho, Caden Schaefer, Nathaniel Muto, Sophia Lee, Valerie Weber, Victor Wynn, Victoria Larson, Johannes Fierde, and the unsung hero is Victor Wen. Victor has proven to be a hidden gem. His consistent dedication and selfless work that work ethic for the betterment of his fellow students is admirable. He is not one to seek the limelight, but is always willing to take on a task. Victor has been a member of the student government for the past three years. He has been a consistent and productive member. His care and concern for his fellow students and the pride he shows for Minnesota State is evident in the work he does. Originally elected as vice chair, Victor has served as a chair for the Student Allocations Committee after a recent mission during winter break. He led his team through five weeks of budget presentations, a day-long deliberation process, and finally making a presentation to student government. Victor's leadership skills have flourished. The nominator wrote, because Victor is not flashy, more of an introvert, if there was ever an unsung hero, I would wholeheartedly say it was Victor Wynn. Victor, thank you so much for your dedication behind the scenes. is given 
into a student who is a student leader and who represents the core values of Minnesota State University of Mankato. Integrity, diversity, access, responsibility, and excellence in their organization and works towards the benefit of others. The nominees are Atlas James, Dagmawi Avira, Emily Dietrich, Emily Kranz, Madison Johnstone, Masaki Hara, Noman Sidonibro, Sierra Royer, and Xavier Thomas. And the first recipient is Emily Dietrich. A few things to describe Emily. Sophomore, management major, non-traditional student, student government senator, and the member of an honors program. Emily exhibits integrity and responsibility as a leader in class discussions, often helping direct conversations beyond a surface level so we can dig into more complicated issues. She values transparent dialogue and is driven by service mentality. She is a strong advocate for social justice with a specific focus on accessibility. For one of her senator projects, Emily worked on a campus-wide survey titled Diverse Perspectives on Disability, Exploring Cultural Perceptions, Stigmas, Barriers Affecting College Students with Disabilities. Emily is committed to excellence and has ambiguous goals for her future. She plans to eventually work as a U.S. Foreign Service Officer with the U.S. Department of State. For this, she needs to meet a base level of proficiency in Korean for her, la her language of choice. Unfortunately, MSU does not offer Korean coursework, and her nominator finished this story best by saying, not to be deterred, Emily worked with campus officers to arrange to take Korean at the University of Minnesota through a consortium agreement. This is who Emily is. She sets her mind to something and acts. Yet, this is done with humility and a lack of self-importance. For this, we recognize you an outstanding collegiate. Congratulations, Emily. <laughs> and I'm not sure if you caught that when I said first recipient, we have another outstanding collegiate, Masaki Hare. Plainly and simply, Masaki Hara epitomizes the university's core values, according to the nominator. Integrity and respect are evident in every day as he treats others with courtesy and kindness. He has been consistently recognized as a trusted university employee and volunteer. In his volunteer and paid positions on campus, he contributes to and exemplifies diversity in what we do. His duties include orienting new international students, translating programs to flyers in Japanese, and creating promotional materials for MSU's intensive English language program. Masaki worked for two years as an animal care technician where he prepared and checked safety equipment in science classrooms across campus. This is a very backroom job that made sure all involved were operate safely with necessary support. Masaki is dedicated to keeping our aquatic environments healthy in the face of climate change, increasing urbanization and industrialization. He's creating solutions by combining the natural and geospatial sciences. He has volunteered his time and expertise in the field with high school students, and Masaki is an outstanding scholar having presented his research at eight professional conferences. To close, his nominator wrote, using informal language, Masaki rocks, given his actions at MSU as well as beyond the campus while earning a bachelor's and now a master's at MSU, I believe him to be the most deserving recognition of an outstanding collegiate. He demonstrates the university's core values in everything he does. Congratulations, Masaki. the recipient of the 2023 Commitment to Cultural Responsiveness Award to recognize this year's nominees. Thank you, Taylor. I am here to present the Commitment to Cultural Responsiveness Award, which honors those who encourage a culture of understanding, belonging, and civility at Minnesota State Mankato. The nominees are Amalia Sharaf, Anna Simmons, Kenya Hernandez, Masaki Hara, 
Nilman Sinadira, and Johannes Ferrede. And the recipient is Amalia Sharaf. Amal is extremely active on campus, and the organizations Amal serves are focused on promoting a culture of understanding, belonging, and civility at Minnesota State Mankato. Amal is active with MSSA, the reporter, Maverick Global Ambassadors, MAPAS leaders, and participates in a research team exploring intercultural competency among students. Amal's most notable commitment to cultural responsiveness, however, is her development of Cultured, a three-part workshop series this spring designed to promote Equity 2030 goals by helping students grow as culturally competent leaders. Partnering with the Maverick Diversity Institute and the Maverick Involvement Team, the series includes three sessions. The first session was designed to help students develop a sense of curiosity and empathy. The second focused on communication and conflict resolution. And the third workshop was all about stereotypes and intercultural communication. Students learned to actively engage, respect, and collaborate with different cultures to become better leaders. Congratulations, Amal, and thank you for your commitment to social justice and building cultural understanding at MSU. Now, I invite to the stage Greg Wilkins, Associate Director of Student Activities in the Centennial Student Union, and Tyler Brogmeyer, Math Central Training Coordinator for the Maverick Involvement Team. Thank you, Atlas. The Maverick Spirit Award is awarded to a student who is willing to step up and who takes risks for the betterment of the Minnesota State University community. The nominees are Alyssa McCullough, Brandon Jackson, Brooke Van Gelderson, Darlington Shingbin, and Aguawi Abera. And lastly, J.C. Horton. Excuse me, the list goes on. Matthew Jensen, <laughs> Noman Sanandera, and Sophie Lee. The recipient is Brandon Jackson. Brandon is a senior marketing student who will graduate this spring with certificates in both integrated business experience and business analytics. Brandon saw a need on campus and started an RSO called Hustle, a faith-based group focused on inclusion. When looking for an RSO for the advisor, he was met with concerns about how sometimes churches restrict who can join them. His reply is that is exactly the point of Hustle. All would be welcome. And true to his word, that is exactly what the nominator observed. Hustle is a diverse group that discusses how to treat others with respect, how to limit social media, addiction, and other important topics. Many times, non-Christian students join discussions and events, which is part of what Hustle is all about, inclusivity. The nominator also impressed on how welcome they have been made to feel. In some ways, this group is more about belonging and supporting one another. The nominator has never felt more comfortable in a faith-based organization and is thankful that it is more than yet, quote unquote, another faith-based group, end quote. The members are committed to academic success and developing interpersonal relationships across the entire campus. Brandon is a go-getter in every sense of the word. Everything he does is high quality and high impact. The club is run with a precision a life a well-run company. Even though he is graduating, there is a group of capable officers and members who will carry forward the mission of inclusion and support. Brandon's vision will be carried on as he graduates, thanks to his leadership. Thank you again, Brandon. The Rising Star Award is presented to a student who is new to Minnesota State University Mankato either a new entering or a first-year transfer student. 
the wall also shows active involvement in an organized campus activity. The nominees are Andrew Collar, Anika Rosso Strasser, Kenya Hernandez, Lexi Peterson, Rowan Morrow. And the rising star is Anika Rosso Strasser. Anika is a first year student who is designated in her own major. She designed her own major. She is studying therapeutic, recreation, applied health, and English, as well as fine art, with a minor in on, on, on aging studies and human animal studies. She plans to pursue a career supporting the well being of older adults through therapeutic recreation and lifelong enrichment. In a short time, Anika embraced learning in and outside of the classrooms while getting involved in the campus as well as the greater Mankato community. Within her first semester, Anika contributed written work and poetry to the River Whale Review, an online literary journal published by Minnesota State University's Creative Writing Program. She also had two poems published in the fall 2023 issue. Anika has been an active member with Mountain Action as well in helping organize the Sacktober Drive during the fall semester and other service activities throughout the entire academic year. In fall 2023, she exhibited an original artwork at the Carnegie Arts Center's annual member show. She is also an active member of the Mankato Lodge Senior Living and Blue Earth Nicola County Humane Society. Inika has taken the initiative and to create her own path already and has more plans on the horizon. She plans to get involved in research on campus and to host a community art show to embrace and encourage others to express themselves. She is an outstanding example of how a student with varied interests can shape their own destiny. Congratulations. <laughs> to present our next award, I please invite and welcome John Bolkoff, the Assistant Director of Fraternity and Sorority Life. Welcome to the stage. Thank you, Greg. The Big Ideas Real World Thinking Award is presented to an undergraduate student in their senior year, a graduate student, or an experienced staff member who actively celebrates the mission of Minnesota State University Mankato to promote learning through effective undergraduate and graduate teaching, scholarship, and research to the state, region, and global community. If the nominees would stand as I read their name. Ella Maxer. <laughs> Talia Quink. Kendall Solomon. Noman Senadhira. And Xavier Thomas. The first recipient is Kendall Solomon. Kendall Solomon is an honors program member and senior biotechnology major. Kendall has paired bold aspirations with practical applications, and she lives the university mission, specifically connected to research and global citizenship. In fall 2022, she studied abroad, choosing a program with an intentional focus on experiential learning designed to explore critical global issues. She participated in the Zanzibar Coastal Ecology and Natural Resource Management Program in Tanzania, where her experience included multiple research projects, homestays, and Swahili language instruction. For Kendall's independent research project, she chose an analysis of the physical domestic water quality in a small community. She needed to develop a research proposal, secure access to equipment and facilities, and conduct the study within a 28-day period. Kind of crazy. This would be difficult to accomplish on one's home campus, much less while studying in an unfamiliar country. In addition to collecting physical samples from area wells, she conducted qualitative interviews with members of the community, using a translator, to determine their perceptions regarding factors that impact water quality. 
In addition to the scope of this project, her nominator was impressed with Kendall's ability to carefully consider the ethical implications linked to her study. Her nominator wrote, I have never seen, never had a student take on such an ambitious independent research project, much less one completed while studying abroad. Congratulations, Kendall, and thank you for sharing your big ideas with the world. And because we have such big ideas on this campus, we have a second recipient. Please join me in recognizing Xavier Thomas. <laughs> Xavier is off doing something with his big ideas, so I will read his introduction nonetheless. Xavier's commitment to making a difference is evident in everything he does. He's genuinely invested in the outcome, he asks good questions, and he gives well-reasoned responses. Xavier is a creative thinker and has an entrepreneurial spirit. This year, Xavier has served as the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Coordinator for Student Government, providing space for him to demonstrate his ability to advocate for others, even those from different backgrounds than his own. Xavier is a dedicated leader and black intelligent gentleman, an RSO on campus that seeks to improve the long-term trajectories of black men in the college system. Under Xavier's leadership as president, BIG has reestablished itself after the pandemic slump felt by many RSOs. Recognized as a finalist in the 2023 Big Ideas Challenge, Xavier's newest endeavor, Miracle Arts, seeks to empower local artists through lessons, connections, and support to achieve their true passions. If you haven't yet, check it out on Instagram at miracle.arts. The nominator pointed out the Women's History Month campaign recognizing exceptionally talent, talented women artists. And just last week, Miracle Arts hosted the very first event, celebrating the written art featuring two writers, both students on campus, talking about their work, their writing process, and more. The goal of the event was to highlight the various career paths a writer may choose to take. Xavier is full of big ideas and not afraid to propose unique and bold solutions to problems he encounters. As his nominator wrote, he is the real deal. Congratulations to Xavier. Our last awards of the evening. The Scott Hagebach Centennial Student Union Hall of Fame Award is presented to a student or staff member who actively celebrates the mission and vision of the Centennial Student Union by helping create a vibrant community and gathering place. Again, will the nominees please stand as I read your name. Joseph Albright. <laughs> Norman Senatira. And Ryan Leistico. This year's recipient of the Scott Hagebach Centennial Student Union Hall of Fame Award is Nolman Senegir. <laughs> Nolman is a senior business management major who exemplifies the very essence of the Centennial Student Union's mission to invite, involve, and inspire. So let's break it down. Invite. Noman started his journey with the CSU operations team as a building assistant and over time ascended to the role of building manager. Although much of this work is done behind the scenes, his actions and attitude create a welcoming environment for all who use the CSU. His unwavering attention to detail and dedication to the ops team have made him a role model for his peers. Noman is quick to greet everyone he runs into and he genuinely wants to make a positive impact on campus. As Vice President of Student Ambassadors, he's engaged in recruiting and training new student ambassadors and giving tours to prospective students. He takes great pride in creating inviting spaces. Involved. No one's involved on campus, obviously. In addition to the CSU Ops team and student ambassadors, he's a student patrol officer for university security, an international peer mentor, Vice President of the Mavlenkins, the Sri Lankan Student Association, building manager, for the student, building manager for Student Events Team, 
Diversity, Equity, Diversity and Inclusion Co-Chair for Sigma Chi Fraternity, Health Probes member, and Honor Student, just to name it. Nolan is an ideal example of a dedicated student leader who's made a significant impact on our campus, community, and in the CSU. His ability to lead a team reflects the kind of impactful leadership that has a lasting influence on campus life and on those around him. As a facilitator for Mev Lankins, Noman plays a crucial role in organizing events and fostering a sense of community among the Sri Lankan students. This commitment to fostering cultural connections aligns with the university's mission to extend the impact of education beyond borders. Inspire. Seeing Noman's involvement has inspired others to get involved. Throughout all of his roles and responsibilities on and off campus, Noman has remained a dedicated and exemplary team member in his first job on campus with CSU operations. I believe being part of the CSU team helped inspire Noman to be so active on campus, and he pays it forward. In the CSU, we talk about being the house of serendipity, and Noman's work in the CSU allows for the serendipitous discoveries to take place for other students, just as they took place for him along his journey. Thank you, Nolman, for continuing the legacy of Scott Hagaback, and congratulations on receiving this honor. And now I will turn back the ceremony to Michelle and John. recipients another round of applause. Now that you've heard about our recipients' accomplishments, you can imagine what a difficult job our judges had reviewing and scoring the nominations. Judges, if you're here, please give a wave. Thank you for your dedicating, thank you for dedicating your time to this process. Thank you for dedicating your time to this process of recognizing leadership in others. It's now my honor to recognize the student leaders of the Maverick Involvement Team. If you can please come to stage. This team has had a vision that every Maverick will engage in meaningful opportunities to develop their own identity as a leader. I like to talk about our work as being in two different buckets. The first bucket is supporting our 200 plus RSOs and their 1,500 officers and advisors. And the other bucket is hosting leadership development opportunities for any Maverick. Much of the work is behind the scenes, so I want to take a moment just to call out some of their accomplishments. First, Taylor Burgle. She's the newest member of our team. She joined us this spring following a resignation, and her very first responsibility was to lead a small group at the student leadership retreat. She hadn't even been to a team meeting yet. But she jumped right in and facilitated that group like she had been part of our planning process the entire time. Also under Taylor's leadership, we've seen an increase in our followers on Instagram and the creation of our very first reels. Christian Mew, Christian Mewji, our RSO coordinator. Christian transferred to MSU last fall and his prior experience working with RSOs was evident as he designed a constitution workshop as one of his first tasks. The examples used to illustrate the importance of different elements of the Constitution exceeded my expectations. In response to feedback last spring, I might be started up monthly RSO officer meeting gatherings on the first Friday of the month. Christian led us through the implementation of this new project. Christian is also responsible for the RSO newsletter that is sent on alternating Wednesdays, except for really busy times when it is weekly. This academic year, we've sent 19 newsletters that average about 800 receipts each. With only 10 unsubscribers all year, we've had an open rate of 46%, which is above the national average. Perhaps most important, Christian keeps our team laughing with regular dad jokes. <laughs> Tyler Bergmeier has been our Mass Central coordinator. As many of you know, Mass Central la launched this past summer. And students were able to sign in for the first time using single sign-on on 
the day of our involvement fair, August 30th, in 2023. Since the academic year had already started, it was a mad dash to introduce the campus to just exactly what Map Central is. Tyler has really been a key to the success of this launch. Tyler's created a playlist of 22 how-to videos on YouTube with over 950 views. There are 229 groups on Map Central, 210 of those are student organizations, and 19 of them are university departments and programs. There are over 1,500 officers, that's an average of six and a half per group, there are over 15,000 members in those 229 groups. They've also hosted 980 events that are on Map Central. These numbers are fantastic for a first year implementation and far surpass the numbers from a year ago with our old software that we don't talk about. <laughs> Thank you, Tyler, for your willingness to dive into Map Central and learn really quickly so that you could teach all of the rest of us. Our member is the leadership coordinator, and we've had a vacancy since March, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention Mevin Zemanhattis. He was a rock star from the very beginning, and under his leadership, we had all sorts of new ideas and new energy put into the leadership programming. Fireside Chats, I would say, is one of our notable new initiatives that we started with his leadership. And so, Mevin and Mevin team, thank you for your time and dedication to the RSOs and leadership development on our campus. Much of what you do is hidden from view, but it does create the foundation of success for so many engagement opportunities here on campus. Thank you so much. And I have just a few reminders as we wrap up the evening. Award recipients, please join us for a group photo. We'll do the award recipient photo first, and then any other recipients or nominees that want to take photos, you can follow right after that. And so we'll be right out the door, and Lenny's on his way out, so he's ready for us. As we conclude our time together, just one last thank you. On behalf of Minnesota State University Mankato, the Maverick Involvement Team, and Student Activities, I would like to thank all of you for joining us here this afternoon to celebrate the nominees and award recipients. Go forth and continue to invite, involve, and inspire. Thank you. Thank you.